Okay, so I know I've gone over sub-levels of the pool rooms like 40 times now, <laughs> but the complex is so vast and expansive that there are just so many undiscovered locations inside of it, and I don't think it'll ever end. I also don't think any of the pool room sub-levels that I've gone over have been as strange and just utterly disturbing as the sub-level in today's video. Level 37.8 or the Drained Depths, as everyone's calling it, just got found, and I'm here to tell you all about it. The good, the bad, and the ugly. If you enjoyed this sub-level series, do me a favor and drop a fat like on this video. That way YouTube knows that you're real. And if this video gets to a whopping two likes, I'll make another part to the sub-level series. Without any more ado, let's get into it, shall we? I don't know much longer we can be left out here, man. Yeah, I don't think we have any more logs. I guess those are our last ones. Well, pretty sure we can trust him. So the drained depths have been classified as a class five difficulty, and they're extremely unsafe and unstable as an overall level. And the entire place is just very dangerous. As I always do in these types of videos, I'm gonna be going over each reason the level is unsafe, whether it be the environments, the entities, the non-Euclidean geometry, all of it. So just get ready to strap in. This one is weird. Level 37.8 is a vast expanse in a winding complex of white tiled rooms, hallways, and corridors, and walls, that all look like the pool rooms, except this sublevel is devoid of any liquid water, any of it, there's nothing here. The layout of the level is also very up to debate, and it changes constantly depending where you go. It's also been noted there are plenty of unconventionally shaped hallways, rooms, corridors, levels, chambers, all that kind of stuff. Everything looks strange. Sometimes there are huge open rooms, sometimes there are small cramped corridors, all the places are empty of water. That's all you need to know right now. Now you might be saying, what would the level not having any water have to do with anything? I mean, how could that be dangerous? It actually is shockingly dangerous because this could lead to several dangers of getting stuck in a deep area, falling into a huge deep chasm where a pool used to be, or losing your footing and slipping down a slide or something and not being able to get out. I'll get into all the dangers later, but that's just where you need to get your head around. This place is not safe. The tiles themselves here have been noted to be very dangerous and not welcoming to humans at all, as falling on them or running into them can result in pretty bad damages to the body, like fractures and contusions and all that great fun stuff that happens when you fall on stuff. Pretty much, it's a hard surface, don't jump onto it, and if you fall, try to cover your head. It's also been reported that walking on the tiles with bare feet can lead to blisters forming faster than the usual blister. It's almost like these tiles are very corrosive to human flesh in general. So just don't walk around this level with the dogs out, okay? It's pretty simple. I don't know why you'd be walking around the back rooms with no shoes on, but moving on. Another strange and unique property to the sublevel is that you might run across a segment of rooms or hallways that are completely upside down. And it's not just the physical level and the tiles that are upside down, it's the gravity too. In these reverse parts, the gravity will go from the floor being normal and to throwing you up to the ceiling and making that the floor. Because of this random gravitational shift, the wanderer might become disoriented and confused, or you might get motion sick to your stomach since you just got thrown up to a ceiling, kind of like being on a roller coaster. But it is said that when this happens, feelings of discomfort and uneasiness and just horror overtake your thoughts, and they give you this uncontrollable fear. Now, just like some of the other sublevels of the pool rooms, the lighting here seems to come right out of the walls themselves. Like there are no obvious sources of light, like windows or light bulbs or whatever. It just seems to literally emanate from the tiles, and it's almost like the level produces its own light. This lighting can also give wanderers here these really uneasy, trapped feelings because you feel squeezed in and claustrophobic, almost like you're in a cage. You know, you're walking through these empty pools and these tight hallways and chambers, and on top of that, there's no light source, so you kind of just feel like you're in a box. While exploring these empty rooms, it's also not uncommon to hear random noises of machinery. These noises have an unknown source, but it's been described as a low machinery hum, almost like a buzz from the lights over on level zero. 
But the noise can be very annoying to people and almost rage inducing to those who are, you know, susceptible to noises. So you gotta watch out for that as well. Some people even claim that these noises cause hallucinations to occur and distressing mental states to happen. I don't know about that. That's just what the document says. This level is also genuinely considered to be one of the most unsettling ones throughout all the lore. Like it's so disturbing and it leaves you so lonely that it's almost like solitary confinement in a way. It's sticking you in these empty tile walls and forcing you to walk around with no end in sight for days and weeks and years. And because of that and all the other things that I've talked about, you, you shouldn't come here, obviously. Now, why is there actually no water in this area? Now, you know, this is a proper sub-level of the pool rooms, so technically there probably should be some type of water, but it's thought here that the tiles themselves have another strange property that's not really understood. It's that any liquid that comes into contact with this tile, the tile will soak all the liquid up and it'll dry instantly. So if you drop a bottle of almond water or if you cut yourself or if you just take a leak or anything, the tiles will absorb it faster than lightning and the ground will be completely dry. This means that if you lose bodily fluids by accidents or if you spill your water source or your food has liquid in it, it'll all soak right into the ground and you'll never see it again. And I think you can see why that's a bad thing. You don't wanna have like a little water bottle left and then you spill it all and then it's gone, you know? But that's what happens here. So I mentioned briefly earlier, but the slick nature of the tiles makes traveling around this large expanse even more dangerous because you could just be walking straight on a path and then slide down into a massive empty pool and you'll have no way out because there's no ladder that goes that far down. Or you could fall and slip and hit your body or head on the ground and it's just very slippery and overall a very hard to traverse level. It's recommended to keep in mind where you're stepping and what shoes you wear in order to not slip and fall into oblivion. In the deeper places of these drained pool rooms, lighting also becomes less and less apparent and it ends up getting pitch black in some of the areas and these darker areas will start to appear more and more. These chambers and passages that are pitch black can be very slick and lead to even more chasms and falls and random hallways you can get lost in. And you know you, you couple that with the labyrinth and layout of the level, and then you've got a very, very bad time on your hands, especially if you get lost easy. Just try not to slip and fall into an empty pool. You're never getting out. But even the dangerous level, the enigmatic geometry, and the liminal loneliness aren't bad enough because we haven't even talked about the entities here. The reports of the creatures that lurk in these empty halls have been frequent, but also strange. Tales of shadowy humanoid figures in the darker areas have abounded over the last few months, as well as reports of tall, white shapes that blend directly into the tile walls here and pop out at the last second to attack you have been cited too. Then even more reports of entities being inside of the actual walls and their eyes poking out of missing tiles and staring at you. Some think that these entity encounters are just your brain playing with you after you got stuck here for so long, but most people agree that they're probably real. I mean, let's be honest, the backrooms is a crazy place. It's not too crazy to think there's entities here. So let me know what you think in the comments. There's also a huge number of facelings in this level that are very dangerous to humans. They seem to have a heightened hostility to people and will attack. Uh, you also probably run into a smiler or a hound in the deeper parts, especially in the huge holes where the pools used to be. They're probably there. Another reason to not fall down. But there might be even more entities. We don't know. You probably should just hope that you see the regular ones and not the entities that are hiding in the walls or they're blended into the walls or the shadow humanoids. Good luck, though. To enter this sublevel, you have to find a slide in the pool rooms and go down it, and you'll have a chance of being sent here to the empty version of the main level. And to exit it, you have to find a very small pool of water that is not disappearing and not being soaked up into the floor, and then try to noclip through it, which will take you back to the main part of the pool rooms, level 37. Although this exit is very rare, you probably shouldn't get your hopes up and just don't, don't think you're gonna escape because you're probably not, or you're either gonna have enough water or you're gonna get attacked by a tile entity. Just good luck, bro. That's all I gotta say. Thank you so much for watching the video. Hope you did enjoy it. I love me some sub levels, man. These things are so interesting to me. I mean, it just builds the lore so well. Make sure you check the description below for all my links. Check out the plush in the description if you want some Broogly merch. Make sure to also check out the second and third channel, Toogly and Spoogly, for more videos from me, man. I upload all, all these three channels. I don't know what else to tell you. Seriously, what are you, what are you doing if you're not subbed to all of them? Just playing, y'all. I love you so much, and I will see you in the next video on any of my channels. Peace and love.